All right, welcome back to another video of a let's play of calculus. Today we'll be proving Fermat's theorem, not Fermat's last theorem, but instead the other Fermat's theorem. I have recorded the video once and then I accidentally deleted it, so we'll do it again. So Fermat's theorem can be written as the following. So I guess the first thing we can do is draw a picture to further under understand the intuitive nature of the theorem. So if we draw a function and we call this function f, in an interval we'll call i, a point c exists exists, if this point is a local extreme point, we know that it is a stationary point, i.e. that the derivative on the point C is equal to zero, which we all know is true because the derivative tells us that the tangent line on the point C is equal to zero, which it is because the line is horizontal. So we can write it as for a function f defined on i, there exists an inner point of i called C, never mind, it's supposed to be suppose that an inner point of i called C is an extreme null point for F. If F is differentiable on C, then C is a stationary point, i.e. F prime of C is equal to zero. So how do we prove this? Actually, we don't need any fancy tricks to do this. We can basically just use the definition of the derivative. Since we know that if H goes to zero, this can be written as the following two limits. As H goes to the positive side of zero and as H goes to the negative side of zero. Why do we do this? Well, I guess the, well, the reason is that now we absolutely know the sign of this. And if we use this with the derivative of C, I know, by the way, I did a little mistake. It's not supposed to be derivative, but instead just a function of F. We can use this on C, say that the derivative of C is equal to this. We split this also to the two cases where we know that the extreme point is a minimum point. Thus, we know that this expression here, if we draw a picture, has to be bigger. Thus, this has to be positive. Since we know this is positive, we know that this is bigger than or equal to zero. Why we type bigger than or equal to, not strictly bigger than, is because h and this could be the same value. The same can be said here. We know that this is negative and we know this is positive, thus this is equal to this. This, in turn, says that f prime of c is both greater than zero and less than or equal to zero, which implies that f prime of c has to be equal to zero. And the same thing can be said with the case where it's a max point. Then we know that this is less than, so this is negative here, and this is positive. Thus, this is less than or equal to zero. Then on the bottom one, where this is negative, this thing is negative, this thing is negative, and this thing is positive. And yeah, and we prove both cases, and thus we're done. 